Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Moon. The Garage Gym Athlete Podcast is a result of my desire to build better humans, unequivocal coaches, and autonomous athletes. I've spent the last several years obsessing over program design, nutrition, and every other way you can optimize human performance. This podcast distills the latest scientific research with what I've learned and blends it with the not-so-scientific field of mental toughness. We are here to build you into a dangerously effective athlete. If you enjoy this podcast, you can find out more about our training at garagegymathlete.com. And if you want to pursue more into the field of coaching and programming, head to endof3fitness.com. Thanks for listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? Hey, how's it going? Going pretty well. And then we're here with Dennis Blasuti. Is that right? That's right. Oh, I nailed it. I didn't even ask him before we started or anything. I just knew it right <laughs> off the bat. Uh, yeah, all right, man. So I'll, I'll throw right. it to you um, for intro, man. Like uh, we got the name, but what do you do for a living? How do you train? Yeah, sure. So, um, uh, yeah, I live here in Toronto, uh, Canada. Um, uh, I'm married, uh, father of three, uh, 11 year old girl, nine year old boy, uh, and a four year old boy. Uh, I work in, in finance. Uh, I'm the CFO of a, of a mid-sized sustainable energy company. Um, so, you know, probably not that different than most people I hear on the podcast. Uh, you know, a lot going on, busy, uh, got a home life and work life and all that stuff. Yeah, that's, um, I have three kids as well, so I know that they keep you busy and you were just recently talking about, um, you know, before we started recording, having to work from home now because of all the, all the stuff that's going on with uh, coronavirus and whatnot. Um, I would just love to hear how that, you know, we'll put it in relation just to fitness. Has that helped or hurt your ability to work out from home? Yeah, I think it's actually helped me. Um, you know, one, uh, as you guys can see and people can't see if they're just listening, but I'm sitting in my gym right now because it's the only space I have in the house, uh, to really kind of get away from the kids and, and get any work. So I have my, uh, you know, office sort of set up on my workbench in, in the gym. So, uh, that part's good. I, I don't, I, I work in an office my commute time is usually about 40 minutes each way, uh, to work. So I guess one sort of plus side uh, of being at home is I've gained that commute time back. Um, so in terms of, uh, you know, finding that bit of time to, to do the workouts and, and get that stuff done, it's actually a little bit easier from that perspective. Um, the other thing I've been finding has been easier for me is I tend to eat better when I'm at home. So, uh, you know, I work uh, in an office where I'm going to food courts and things like that to get food and well, I try to make uh, good choices as much as possible. I don't always. Um, and then, you know, people bring things into the office and all that kind of stuff. So I found over this last been three weeks now working at home. And uh, I think I've been pretty good on, on you know, getting the workouts done and, and diet and a few things like that. So I'm hoping to fall in the category of people that get more fit during uh, this time. Uh, I think it can go either way. Yeah, I think I think dialing things in when you're at home, it's a little bit easier because you can control like every aspect of your environment. Now, I have one last question before we get into the typical stuff. And sorry to throw you off uh, off course right out at the beginning here. But so you, you said you have a 40 minute commute. Has this decreased your I don't know what you did on your commute. Maybe you listen to podcasts or or audiobooks or whatever. Has this decreased your time to be able to do things like that? Yeah, that's a fair point. So I do. I listen to podcasts um, on that. On the, I take the subway. So to and from, I listen to, to podcasts, including this one. Um, so that part has, has decreased a bit. Um, you know, I usually listen to like the news and, and then various other just kind of different podcasts I like. So yeah, that's kind of uh, gone down a little bit. Um, I do have some that I kind of, uh, download and, uh, and listen to and try to take a break, um, in, in the daytime. But, uh, yeah, that, that part has been impacted a bit. Yeah. We were, we had a team meeting about, or just team meeting earlier in the week and, that's something I, I don't have a commute, but I, I mean, I technically do. I take my son to school in the mornings. Um, and then on the way back is when I normally listen to books or podcasts and that's just been like wiped out. And I'm like, I'm not like getting through anything like, you know, books or like 
why not? And I just realized this, there's this huge missing piece in my life where I used to get a bunch of stuff done. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, maybe no one will listen to this podcast and I can really just say whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Awesome, man. So what's your garage gym setup or basement setup maybe? Is it? I'm actually, uh, I'm living in the lap of luxury because I have uh, both a basement gym and a garage gym. That's awesome. Uh, and, and that sort of evolved because um, I moved into this house about a year ago. And at my old house, I had a gym in a shed. Um, it, I started, it was like a hundred square foot shed. So it wasn't very big, but it was high. And I had a rack that when I moved here, I was happy to uh, have an indoor space to work out, but my rack was too high. But I didn't want to get rid of that rack. So I put that rack in the garage and I got a new one for, uh, for down here, um, which has been awesome because uh, living in, in you know, Canada it gets pretty cold in the winter. And I was uh, in an uninsulated uh, shed trying to work out and Oof. I was pretty good at, at getting at it. It was also kind of in the back of my my own yard so i had to sort of shovel a path if it like snowed a lot to get back to the gym um so all that uh ended ended up with me having two gyms so uh that's a pretty good setup uh overall and uh i really enjoyed actually being indoors this winter so <laughs> oh, i bet that's awesome yeah i actually now that i think about it i did that unintentionally in north carolina but I, it wasn't necessarily two setups it was just i split my equipment so it was like rack in like, uh, you know, air dyeing and stuff like that in the garage. And then the basement, I had like reverse hyper and like accessory equipment, which in the end ended up just being a huge pain because I had to like run between, <laughs> run between. between. Yeah, I couldn't like choose like, Oh, basement day or, or garage day. But yeah, that's, uh, anyway, there was a, a big hill to get down to it from the outside and it doesn't snow anything like in Canada, but the few times it did you, yeah, I almost, uh, bust it trying to get down to my reverse hyper. So it's, you kind of mentioned it, man. What was, uh, what's the full equipment uh, list you got? Um, yeah, so I'm pretty, pretty good these days. So in the baser gym, I've got a, a road rack, uh, uh, barbell, high bar. I have a rower, a concept two rower. Uh, I have about 500 pounds or so of weight. Um, some kettlebells and dumbbells, various sort of bands, uh, TRX, and then uh, in the garage, I have a, a, a different rack, a different rogue rack in there. I have a, a rogue Bella bar, which is the female bar. And that's because it's actually, in, when I was working on my shed, it was a bit small. So I had to get a shorter bar. So I got, I got that one. So it's just a little bit smaller. Um, I've got a plyo box. Uh, I have a sandbag, um, which, is, which is really cool. I used that this morning to walk around the block with. Um, weight vest uh, my brother got me for my birthday uh some rings and a skipping rope uh i think that's probably about it so uh, pretty good setup i can do basically uh everything that gets programmed pretty close um and pretty simple substitutions when i can so yeah. overall overall pretty good sounds like you got most of it man and what, what was the big reason behind starting a garage gym um, I think ultimately it was pretty typical, like, um, really came down to, to, um, to schedule and time. So you got to hear that all the time. You know, I, I've worked out, you know, ever since kind of high school sports and, and, and all that kind of stuff and probably pretty traditional, um, you know, going to gyms and all that kind of stuff. And then we actually lived abroad, uh, for a few years. We were in the Canary Islands. And when I was over there, I made friends with a guy that uh, was a neighbor, and he had a garage gym. And so I started working out with him like six in the morning, and, and that was pretty cool. And then when we moved back, I did CrossFit for a couple of years, but that really just wasn't working from a schedule perspective. Um, you know, because I would get up, I would do like a 7 a.m. class, but by the time I got to it and drove there, then got back and then tried to get the, help get the kids ready for school and all that, just wasn't working. Uh, so I switched to a, a garage gym in my shed a few years ago, and I started just programming for myself. Um, and then uh, actually stumbled across you guys um, when I was scrolling through trying to find podcasts to listen to. So the first time I heard of Garage Gym Athlete was actually on, on a podcast um, when I was just kind of listening to that. And after hearing that, I'd give that a go. So I've been doing um, working with your programming since uh, August uh, last year. So That's awesome. Uh, use cycles in now. So, and I think it's been great. It's taken a lot of the, you know, 
so to speak, the thinking out of it for me. And, and also you guys just program better than, than I was anyway. <laughs> um, and, uh, what, what, uh, so you've been in since August, what are the, what tracks have you been on or what track are you on this cycle? Yeah. So I, I actually did uh three block for a, uh, about a track and a half, uh, a cycle and a half. Um, and then I, and, and then I switched to strength. Um, and then I, I switched now I'm into uh, hard to kill. Nice. And I actually, I started with three block um, because I was worried about the time and how long it was going to take. And what I sort of realized, uh, which actually one of the things I like about your guys' uh, programming is I worked out, I was working out really way too slow. So I just yeah. rested long and I wasn't keeping on top of my, my time and I was doing all the bad habits like fiddling on my phone and and stuff like that. So I just wasn't getting as much work done. So when I first started, it was taking me an hour to do three block by the time I did block zero and then the recovery after. And then I just started trying to work out faster and, and stick to the times. And now I'm getting through the, you know, the hard to kill, no problem in an hour. Um, yeah, that's a common thing with, with uh, new people coming along that they're just not used to. And then like, like, um, just time just disappears, especially people who go to, to regular gyms and stuff too. Yeah. You are on your phone or you're, you're just, just resting to rest and just mind wanders off to uh, uh, random places. Oh, yeah, for sure. I find I just start daydreaming or something like that and just completely forget what I was doing. And then, Oh geez, I just rested for four minutes. So yeah, yeah. I find the blocks and, and just kind of sticking to the time schedule has been a big help. And I think just kind of this idea you guys talk about sometimes of getting the engine going, like, uh, just working out faster, I think it's kind of better for that, that overall part as well. So, uh, you know, I think that's been a big, big help. I, I did strength in the winter because just cause it was cold and there's more like running and outdoor type stuff when you're doing, uh, um, hard to kill. So now that it's uh, nicer out, it's switched, uh, switched over. So. Yeah. And what's funny is it, it, it was the athletes that helped create the block system because we would put in programming and then, you know, for like a standard hard to kill day. And then, when we first started uh, programming for athletes, like the feedback would be like, yeah, this is a great workout, man. It took me an hour and a half. I'm like, right. why'd that take an hour and a half? You know, like I, and I, we just, but we just kept getting that feedback over and over and I'm like, okay, I got to put in somehow, like, this is how long it should take. Um, and I think that's been really helpful. I know it's, it's incredibly helpful for me. Like I only had exactly 60 minutes between my last event. Um, and then before like this, this podcast, uh, or, yeah. And, uh, anyway, I had that much time to fit it in and I did the entire hard to kill thing, just followed the blocks and made sure I got it all done. So uh, it's been really helpful for me too. What are, uh, some of your goals right now? Um, so I kind of, I did put some thought into this, you know, kind of thinking about coming on here. I, I've got a bit of like an overall goal and, and you know, if some that's sub goals, but, um, uh, my overall kind of uh, goal these days. And I, I sort of stole this from a friend, but it's this ability to say yes. And what I mean by that is that, you know, when the kids come and say, let's go play soccer, let's go for a bike ride. Yes. Friend says, let's go mountain biking. Yes. You know, do you want to try surfing on vacation? Yes. Um, and that really just comes down to this whole idea of physical preparedness and uh, wanting to just be ready to do stuff and, and enjoy things and uh, and kind of, you know, all the things that are, that are kind of just fun to do. Um, and then also to be able to do that for a long time. I, you know, the other thing that's kind of been on my mind recently is that, you know, I turned 40 this year. Um, and you know, that didn't bug me too much, but I started looking at guys I know like in their fifties. And I think there's a pretty big disparity between like guys that are like 50 years old and are like old men and guys that are 50 years old old and are fit and active and still doing things and I kind of got this feeling like what you do in your 40s and your habits you build in your 40s like the outcome at the end of that decade could be very different depending on what you do I think uh, and then I think if you get behind on that it's you know it gets a little harder to, to catch up and so you know I started thinking a bit more about about that kind of stuff and so more focused on some of the stuff you guys do around recovery uh, you know I like actually having that recovery game uh, in there, the heel three elements you call it now, as a reminder uh, to kind of stay on top of that. And so, yeah, I've been really kind of uh, thinking about that kind of stuff uh, a lot more. And I think you know, just trying to be well rounded, um, you know, and 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 that kind of stuff. So, and, and I think I've seen progress. You know, I've I've been setting PRs as I go through. 
Um, you know, I've been trying to focus on, you know, some specific stuff around, you know, I'd, I'd like to be able to squat more. Um, so I've been kind of working on that, working a lot more on technique and form to try and keep building that up. So, you know, just been focused on, on a lot of those kind of things. I think that's awesome, man. The ability to say yes. I think that's, that's a really cool way to put it. Yeah. Um, I wish it was an original thought, but you know, someone else. <laughs> Add it to me, and I was like, "This, this is great." Dude, you should have just totally stolen it, and then like uh, sent sent him the podcast yeah. after, and been like, "Thanks." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what were you doing? You mentioned CrossFit. Was there anything else that you were into before uh, your garage gym athlete? Um, you know, I did some pretty traditional uh, stuff. Like, I, I played uh, football, wrestling, rugby in high school, uh, football at university level, and, and so did a lot of just working out through that, and then you know, just pretty traditional. Uh, kind of working out in gyms uh, and going to different places like that. And then, uh, yeah, and then, you know, like I said, my friend's garage and then and then CrossFit. And I did like CrossFit um, for um, the kind of competitiveness uh, aspect of it. Um, I like the idea of getting in, you know, with other people. And, and the place I was going had some guys that um, could get pretty competitive. So I, I like that aspect but it just wasn't working for me uh, from a time perspective. So, you know, I think that is, you know, I think another thing that's kind of nice about this group is, uh, you know, there's the Facebook group and ways to kind of see what other people are doing. Um, you know, kind of break through that kind of working out by yourself and in your basement kind of, kind of thing. So. Yeah. It's the, the virtual side, which we're all embracing right now to many parts yeah. of our lives. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's becoming, um, more and more commonplace. And I think, I think the community does a, does a great job. I, I love the people in it. Now, uh, how do you like training in your garage or basement? It depends on the weather. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I really like it. I mean, I like the convenience factor for sure. Um, like I get up, so I get up at five, um, in the morning, kind of get it done. And then I'm up, you know, I'm basically, I'm done. I'm through my workout and um, you know, kind of ready by the time it's time to wake the kids up and, and start getting ready for, uh, um, for school. So I, I think that part's, uh, definitely great. I think as I've sort of built up, uh, you know, my kind of equipment stack, I've got pretty much, every, I can do pretty much everything, um, that I need to do, uh, do here. So, you know, I like that, that part of it, you know, I'm in control of the music and, and all that kind of stuff as well. So I don't have to listen to whatever, <laughs> um, they're playing at the gym. <laughs> so all that part, uh, all that part's good. And like, I feel like it, at this point I'm getting really good workouts, um, you know, at the end of the day and, and, uh, you know, the workouts that you guys have are, you know, it's good variety. So you don't get, uh, too bored of it. Um, so you're, you're always kind of changing and, and doing something different. Um, you know, even, you know, with the ones today, it was, uh, you know, I was inside for part of it. Um, I was on the rower and then I was outside, you know, first carrying the, my sandbag around the block, which is always fun when joggers go by and they're like, what are you <laughs> doing? <laughs> and uh, the joggers and the dog, dog walkers are always the ones that think I'm a weirdo when I'm walking around <laughs> the, uh, the neighborhood, <laughs> you know, at whatever, six in the morning with like, I remember there was one right where I had to carry a kettlebell around the block. You know, it was like, uh, and I'm still walking around carrying a kettlebell like a baby. And oh. people like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> I love it. And, and uh, you know, but anyway, I get to get outside, get some fresh air and then, and then back in. And so, you know, I, I, I do quite, I do quite like it. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I'll send, uh, you know, videos to my buddy, Tommy, who's working on his gym uh, elsewhere and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, kind of keep in touch with people that way too. So that's awesome. Now what's the hardest workout you've ever done? Uh, that's a tough one. You know, I, I am, I was trying to think about this and, and I couldn't really nail it down too close. I did a half marathon a couple years ago and distance, uh, running is not in my wheelhouse. Um, so that was a, a bit of a challenge and that one came to be because a friend of mine was like, Hey man, do you want to do this? And I said, sure. And didn't really think it through. And then like two days later, he's like, okay, hey, you want to start training? I go, okay. <laughs> nice. Guess we're, guess. Um, uh, I did a weighted Murph for the first time and I know you've done like several hundred of these things. I really underestimated the impact of the difference between having a weight vest and, and not having a weight vest. Yeah, it's um, different. 
Uh, so that one, that one heated up pretty quick. Um, why that yeah. 20 pounds is so much more destructive, but it, it really is. It seems like it should be nothing, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you know, I, I don't actually do many of the meet yourself Saturdays. Um, so I haven't done a lot of them because I, I usually do actually have Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class on Saturday morning. So that's kind of the other, uh, kind of motivator to stay in, in shape and all that kind of stuff too. Um, nice. so don't go get beat up on Saturday mornings. It's okay. Not all of us do every meet yourself Saturday. We know. I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like yeah, I listened to the podcast where you guys were doing the rundown of all of them and who's done what and whatnot. And I think you were getting the, getting the hard hard part of that one, Joe. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm here for the everyman. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We need we need we need somebody to have realistic expectations for us. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, I mean. I got, I have expectations. Uh, <laughs> I mean, in your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? Yeah. You know, I think it is just that getting up and, uh, doing it con- consistently, you know, it's, uh, whether it's exercise, whether it's, you know, career goals and, and all this kind of stuff. It's when it's, um, you know, just getting after it day in and day out is, is, you know, takes more than just kind of getting into it for a little while. You know, you can, it, it easily apply to, to, to workouts, but also, you know, you go to work and you have a tough day and you don't want to deal with it, but you got to, you know, still got to see things through. And so that apply, applies to everything. Um, you know, I, I always try to do the workout um, even when I don't want to, because, you know, I'd rather just do it. And if, even if I'm not feeling well, unless I'm really like sick or something, just do it. Even if I got to scale it back and just, get it done anyway you know i just think that's kind of kind of the biggest thing so you know just uh my mom used to call it um stick to it of this which is not a word but you got to stick to it and uh, uh and get after it so i think that's that's uh, the biggest thing that's awesome that's great advice from your mom too it's incredible uh now if you could only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life what's it going to be yeah i would uh i'd go with the rower Nice. Um, because it's you know, too first, it, well, it's, it's the, uh, it's my, really my main source of cardio in the winter time. I'm really not a, that big of a fan of going around outside in the snow. I, you know, I've done it, but I'd rather, and I just find it's hard to simulate the rower as well. Um, I feel like there's a lot of other things I can do with body weight or just, you know, lifting, uh, you know, um, heavier things or whatever if you had to if you were stuck um i just think the rower is hard to simulate um you know if you're kind of stuck with it so yeah i think i'd go with the rower yeah i, I think just, the it, the, ro- the intervals that the rowers are really good at like the these smaller intermediate intervals like anywhere from uh one one to five or six minutes or something is definitely hard to replicate for because it you know four minutes on a rower sucks way more than four minutes of running or, or, or four minutes on a spin bike Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And and you can do like those short intervals too. You can turn the uh, damper up quite a bit and you can make it a strength exercise too. So you can get, you know, pretty hard pulls out of that. Yeah. And that, that's something I've noticed is, um, the bike erg from concept two that I have, like I tried doing some shorter intervals on that, uh, at first, like when we'd program a man, like very much like there was today, you know, like 15 seconds on and stuff like that. And it's just not the same, you know, it's, you can, you can bike as hard as you want, even with the damper up and your legs might get pretty tired, but, uh, something like the rower, the airdyne where you have upper body involvement too, it's just, it changes the game and makes it way more severe in a very short time period. All right. Uh, Joe, you got anything? Oh yeah. Uh, (laughs) if you could add anything to your gym or basement or wherever you want, what would it be? no cost yeah i think i'd actually i'd like to have an airdyne um i've tried them before back in uh you know i used to go to the crossfit gym and uh uh, a lot of people talk about them as being kind of like i guess one something that really sucks but it seems like you can get a lot out of them uh really fast um so i think that's something I, i would like to have I don't have a great spot for it because I we use half the garage for for a car, 
Um, but you know, maybe if I could convince my wife not to use that half of the garage, I could stick <laughs> it in somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I, I'd like to have one of those. I've lost that car garage battle for years, but <laughs> if you win, let me know how you did it. Uh, yeah, well, all right, man. Uh, a lot of garage gym athletes out there listening. What is your best advice for them? Yeah. You know, I think, um, I got a, a couple of things I would say. I think one is, you know, just sticking to it, you know, consistency is, is everything. So really try to keep track of that. Um, I like the idea of, you know, setting some goals and then, you know, tracking them. Um, I listened to the, uh, you did that one goal podcast at the beginning of the year. And I, I wrote down some, so I, didn't, I wrote down kind of more than one. So I kind of didn't quite do it exactly right, but I wrote some few things down. And then every week I started writing down kind of progression and how, how that week went. Uh, I felt that was just kind of a good way to kind of just keep everything uh, sort of moving. And then the other thing I'd say is just take advantage of the resources. I mean, the one thing that's, that's cool about Garage Gym Athlete is, you know, you guys have the Monday podcast where you can get a lot of information. It's really getting kind of knowledge up. Um, you know, I, I personally, I like knowing a bit of the why behind, uh, what I'm doing. And then also you have a lot of the other nutritional, um, uh, things and you know, the things outside of just the, the kind of uh, exercise component. Um, you know, the Facebook group is, is, uh, is good. You know, I've gone in there and asked some questions from time to time when, uh, you know, I wasn't sure about something or whatnot, and people are usually pretty quick to respond and, and give answers. So. You know, I think, yeah, just take advantage of the resources that are, are part of are part of the whole package. Awesome. Well, Dennis, I appreciate you being a garage gym athlete and, and for your time today. Uh, just thanks for being a part of the community and uh, giving us an awesome interview, man. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for appreciate listening to the Garage Gym Athlete podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garagegymathlete.com. You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, The Garage Gym Athlete, or you can even get featured on the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Thanks for listening.